As we move in um, to a sermon today, I have, I have some questions for you that have absolutely no bearing on anything. How's that for a catchy intro? What I'm about to say does not matter. Um, but it matters to me. It's a test of my own personal neuroses. I want to know um, if I'm alone in the world or if there are others <laughs> like me. Um, so I'm going to show you two brands of things, of items, and, and I want you guys with your hands to vote on which one you would choose if they were both in front of you, and you had to get one, like you have to get one, so you have to choose one or the other. And, 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 and so here you go. Would you choose Coke or Pepsi? How many Coke people and how many Pepsi people? Coke wins. All right, how about this one? Energizer or Duracell? How many people would choose Energizer? <laughs> How many Duracell? I thought we'd like bunnies here, but we like copper. Copper, wasn't that the hound and yeah, there we go. All right. <laughs> Price chopper or high V. How many of us are high V? <laughs> right? How many of us are price chopper? Well that was that was we might have a rumble after. Um <laughs> We d- we're divided loyalty. So how many of you, though, had, a- when it all comes down to it, had absolutely no opinion whatsoever about any of these things, <laughs> right? Right. How many had clear choices, though, maybe for at least one of them? Right, right, right. So this is where my neuroses comes in, and I know this about myself. I had clear preferences for all of them for absolutely no reason. Like, Coke feels right to me every day of the week. I'm Coke. Pepsi, not so much. I don't even drink soda. Like, I don't drink either of them, but I prefer one of them over the other, probably because my dad drank Diet Coke my whole life. It was always sitting on the the kitchen table, the two liter that we weren't allowed to touch. It was his. So it's familiar. And for me, familiar is, is comforting in some ways. And it's the same with batteries. Like, I don't even buy batteries that much anymore. And intellectually, I know that the brand probably doesn't matter a whole lot. And yet, if you were to ask me to go grab some double A's today after church, I'm going to grab Duracell. Why? I have no idea. It just feels familiar (laughs) and right. And I, I, I like bunnies. I like bunnies, just not the battery bunnies. They're unpredictable. And I grew up in Indiana, so we didn't have Price Chopper or High V growing up, but now we are a house divided. Like, we had the National Honor Society thing the other day, and so we all had to bring cookies. And so Liz says to me, can you go to High V to get cookies? And I went straight to Price Chopper, and I bought <laughs> cookies. And why? I, I th- for me, it's because when I first got here, there was a Starbucks in the Price Chopper on South 7. So the first grocery store I went to living in this area was a Price Chopper, and it stuck. I don't like change. I'm like, I went there. It worked once. I'll just keep going back. And then one came to town. It was meant to be. And by the way, the kind of cookies I bought were those soft loft house cookies. You know, those are like the official school cookie and that's why I bought them, because that was someone brought them the first time when my daughter was in kindergarten. I'm like, oh, this is what you get for schools. And now it's just familiar. And so when I go, I get them. I, I like the same. I, I don't like change, because change is hard. Different is hard. I mean, how many of you are sitting in the same seat you sat in, or even in the proximity, even our bell people that weren't here for like the last three weeks, how many of you are sitting in the same seat you sat in the last time, right? For a group of people who have dedicated their lives to following someone who tells us to change our hearts and lives, we have a hard time with change. Am I the only one? (laughs) No, because change is hard. Can y'all say that with me? Change is hard, different is hard, but Jesus continually calls us to embrace change, embrace different, change our hearts and our lives. And so that's exactly where we're going to go in the next four Sundays. We're going to explore the different that Jesus calls us to, the changes that he calls us to make as his disciples, the things that Christians do that make us, to use the Apostles Paul's words, not of this world. 
And so we're going to start in Mark chapter 10. We've been in Mark this whole year, and so now we're in chapter 10, which may be one of the hardest changes Christ calls us to. Right after Jesus says, let the little children come to me, a young man comes to him. And this is Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 26. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to be saved? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. And you know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. The young man said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go. Sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When he heard this, the young man was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. And then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for the camel to go through the eye of a what? Needle. Than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. Can you all read this last line with me? For God all things are possible. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, (laughs) there are so many things, so many places and times in life where we think to ourselves, this is impossible, God. Are we ever going to get out of this situation? This is impossible, God. Am I ever going to be the person I know you've called me to be. It feels impossible, God. And so, Lord, speak to each of us today. Give us the word that you know each one of us needs to hear to move us closer to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Did y'all hear that? Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. We all good with that? Go, sell what you own, Give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. You're all still here. (laughs) I didn't even see a phone with someone on eBay selling their stuff. (laughs) Nothing. Nobody took Jesus at his word and went. My question for us today is, what if we did? Like, what if we did call it a day, just, we all just went home, and we do what Jesus said to do, and then we'll meet back here next week and talk about it, and also how we're going to make the loan payment, but (laughs) how's that for a choice, right? Coke or Pepsi? Stay here and politely listen to a sermon like we always do, because it's familiar and, and comforting. Or go and sell everything we own, give it away, and do something different. Do what Jesus said to do. 
same, or different. And think about it. Like, think about how much would be different. Like, who's got house payments, car payments, phone payments? I'm like, how many streaming payments do you make now every month to watch stuff? Like, I am reminded every month that with kids, we have band payments, we have dance payments, we have... We have Amazon Prime payments that just keep happening and things keep showing up at our house. I, like, we even make payments on razors. We're in the Dollar Shave Club. We're in the club. And it costs way more than a dollar. You can even buy clothes now and make monthly payments and they'll just send you clothes every month. You don't even have to think about it. It just happens. If we were to sell everything we own and give it to the poor, not only would we lose all the stuff we own, but we couldn't make the automatic payments we've set up on the stuff we think we need to survive. Everything about our daily lives would be what? Different. Everything would change. And and say it again with me. Change is hard. No wonder the rich young man goes away sad, by the way. That's what that word means, sad and grieving. No wonder the disciples, by the way, the Greek for the, what the disciples do really means they were stopped dead in their tracks. They were astounded when Jesus said it was harder Uh, it was harder for the wealthy to get into heaven because that wasn't what their world said because for the Greeks, and actually for us now, right, if you're wealthy, it means you're smiled upon. As much as we don't like to admit it, don't we look at people who are wealthy and think, man, God must like them better. This went against everything the disciples ever knew. Change is hard. In fact, change is so hard that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to change, to inherit the kingdom of God, to receive eternal life. I think that's why, as Christians, for 2,000 years, we've been trying to walk back what Jesus said and make it a little easier to take, a little more palatable. Y'all remember Ananias and Sapphira from the book of Acts? Like, that was awkward. They sold their land and gave it all to the church to give to the poor. Well, almost all. (laughs) They gave almost all of it away. They kept the bit for themselves because change is hard. And they died. God smote them. They were smoted. (laughs) That was really hard. (laughs) Life got really different for them. Early Christians, they argued about this scripture, about what Jesus said. Some suggested, get this, some suggested that maybe Mark or some scribe actually just had a typo. They wrote the wrong word down. It wasn't a camel. They, see, the Greek word for camel is camelos. It wasn't a camel in the eye of a needle. It was a camelos, a rope. And while a rope is still get hard to get through the eye of a needle, it's not as hard as a camel, right? It's a little bit easy. It's still hard, but not as hard as we thought. It's maybe not impossible. So maybe Jesus actually said it's easier to get a sailing rope through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into heaven. I mean, that's hard, but not as hard as a camel, right? In, in the Middle Ages, they decided that we had the right camel, but the wrong needle. You may have, some of you may have heard this one, like it's still around, that Jesus didn't mean a sewing needle, rather that there was a gate in Jerusalem that was called the eye of a needle that was left open at night, but it was a small gate. And so if you wanted to get your camel through the gate, the camel had to stoop, right? They could still get in though. I don't know about you, but I like those odds better, right? <laughs> camel, eye of needle, or just stooping camel? I'll go with stooping camel. <laughs> stooping camel, I could still maybe do. Except, for the record, there is not now, nor has there ever been, a gate in Jerusalem called the Eye of the Needle. It's totally easier than a sewing needle, but it's totally made up to make what Jesus said less hard. 
Now, from the beginning, and, and this is probably what you've learned and heard, probably maybe even from up here, that the most common way we've approached Jesus' command to give it all away is to question whether Jesus actually meant for everyone to sell everything. Or did Jesus just know that this particular young man had an issue with his possessions, an obsession with his possessions? Right? And, and so maybe for this particular young man, for him to follow Jesus, for him to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus, that he had to give away his possessions. That was his particular bugaboo. But we should all then ask ourselves, what's our stumbling block? What is keeping us from fully following Jesus? And it might be different for all of us. We've all got our possession obsession, right? Like, what do we might need to change about ourselves? Like, we may need to change our opinion about money, but we may need to change our opinion about Starbucks, or pride, or hurt. That's appealing. And that's been the dominant Christian interpretation, actually, throughout the centuries. One of my study Bibles actually says that very thing in the footnotes. That's why I like to study that Bible. It says, although Jesus wanted this man to sell everything and give his money to the poor, this doesn't mean that all believers should sell all their possessions. Whew. Saved by the editors. <laughs> this Jesus guy was really starting to make me nervous, like I was going to have to change my entire worldview, my entire way of being, and who wants to do that? Thank you, editor. <laughs> That's way too much change. And say it. Change is hard. Different is hard. But Jesus calls us to different Again and again, Jesus calls us to change. God's been calling us to change, by the way, ever since we got kicked out of the garden. For what? For wanting to be the same. Did y'all know that? We got kicked out of the garden because we wanted to be the same as the other guy in the garden. The other guy just happened to be God. That's what the serpent says to Eve. Chapter 3, Genesis, he tells her, eat the fruit, go on, you will not die for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. <laughs> the same as God. You'll be the same. You won't be different anymore. How often do we spend our lives trying to be the same as everyone else? Because we know, especially in middle school, different is hard. <laughs> especially when it comes to money. That's why we've been struggling for 2,000 years to soften Jesus' words, to make them apply to somebody else. Oh, just the rich people. I'm not rich. <laughs> just them. Or to make it apply to something else. Oh, just Starbucks, not, not like my bank account. <laughs> that would be silly. <laughs> but I know this is crazy, but bear with me. Like, what if Jesus really meant what he said? Like, for all of us. What if Jesus really meant what he said? Go, sell what you own. Give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. How does it feel to hear those words? Like, what if Jesus were standing right in front of you today? I imagine many of us would ask, like, how am I doing? What are my grades, Jesus? Like, what are my chances for eternal life here? <laughs> now close your eyes. Picture Jesus standing right in front of you, looking at you full on, face to face, and saying to you, go. Sell what you own. Give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. How does it feel? How do you feel? Some of us might be taken aback, like dumbstruck, like, like the disciples, just like, some of us might be sad, <laughs> grieving at the thought of losing all those things that we love, like the young man. 
Or maybe you're already making excuses like, yeah, I, wait, wait, did you say a camel or a rope? I, I didn't quite hear you, <laughs> Jesus. Or maybe like, yeah, you like, you, 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 you like parables, Jesus, right? Metaphors. So that was just another metaphor, right? Like you didn't mean for me to give up everything. When you said give up all your possessions, it was just Starbucks. Metaphor, Jesus, right? Give up Starboard, Starbucks, Mike, and, and heaven awaits you. <laughs> but maybe he meant it. Maybe Jesus meant exactly what he said. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. But Jesus, I can't do that. That is way too much change. That's way too different. That's that's impossible, Jesus. And there's Jesus, still holding your gaze with his eyes filled with love, just like they were for that rich young man. And Jesus loved him. And he says, I know. I know it's impossible. For mortals, it is impossible. But not for God. For God... All things are possible. So what if we trust in God, lean on God, and maybe today we just take a step, even a small step, and then another, and then another, and the next thing we know, we're following Jesus, the same one who said, come, follow me. And when you start following Jesus, by the way, Everything is different. So here's the thing. The question for you, I, I don't have an answer. Watch me walking it back. See, I'm walking it back, just like we've been doing for 2,000 years. Did Jesus really mean for all of us to literally sell everything we've got and give it all away? I, I, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that he didn't mean for us to be living it up in one of the wealthiest countries in the history of the world while there are people struggling to live at all. And, and I'm going to be honest, like, I can't even buy a pack of energizers. How am I going to give everything away tomorrow? If I look myself in the mirror, I'm probably not. Not yet because it's hard, and that's a whole lot of different. But maybe I can commit right now to begin to take some different steps. Maybe I can commit today to make some changes, to give different, differently than I have, and to trust in God, and to know that with Him, the impossible is possible. You might think change is impossible for you now, but with God, it's what? Possible. Amen? Amen. So if you did mean it, for 2,000 years we've been getting it wrong. A lot of us. And even if he didn't mean it literally, I'm sure he meant it more than we take it. <laughs> and so I want to invite you to say with me, please, because it's hard to do different alone, to share in this prayer of confession for all those places we haven't been different. The author of Hebrews tells us we have a great high priest who can sympathize with our weakness. Jesus, God's Son, our Savior. And therefore, with confidence, with confidence, the impossible is possible. We can confess our sins aloud. So let's do that together. God of justice and mercy, we confess that we put ourselves first and trust in things that will not last. We desire the evil 
and scorn the good. We gather up the power and wealth and push aside the needy in our way. O oh Lord, be gracious to us. In spite of our great sin, teach us to love your justice and share in your mercy. Help us to seek the treasure of heavenly life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We do have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, God's Son, our Savior, and in his name you are forgiven.